So in, in the same way here, if you are going to actually uh, create uh, a system that operates efficiently and reliably for, for the development of society, you need to have uh, a kind of a framework of regulation. And you need to make a pay attention to the sustainable development. Energy systems are among the, the ones that have had most impact when it comes to, the, to our environment and health. And uh, now we have a lot of knowledge about that. And how we put this knowledge actually into play in defining new, 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 uh, uh, new systems. And if I narrow that into an example on the bioenergy uh, intersections, then we would have questions related to, as I mentioned before, land use and biodiversity when it comes to specific questions of sustainable development. But on the technological side, what is the most efficient conversion? In the biofuels for transport, for example, we have many new uh, technologies in the pipeline being tested with different levels of efficiency. Um, on the market side, we have uh, an upscaling of the use of bioenergy at the global level. While we had some countries had had some uh, very significant success, like uh, Sweden, Finland, Brazil, uh, and uh, China also in biogas, actually. Uh, so um, now we have an, a very large upscale of that, and uh, that has can have uh, other types of impacts that we were not actually being cons uh, considering in the past. Uh, if I narrow even further, then we, I, I bring, we, I have a, a number of, 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 of uh, research uh, uh, projects in, in the realm of, of bioenergy. And uh, some of them can, that we can be dealing with issues related to, to resources. For example, a big issue related to resources in Sweden today is what, what types of resources do we have actually for biogas production? We are actually pushing for, for introduction of biogas in the transport sector, and how much can we actually generate uh, within uh, the context of Sweden? How much trade will actually come in and into play? Uh, and in this, uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges of bioenergy is actually to put together all these pieces. And that's how the systems approach is important because uh, many countries are now very aware of the potential they have, but uh, really putting these pieces together at the same time is quite a challenge. So just to illustrate, this is bioenergy in Sweden today. It can look like that. In the forest, uh, you have a very efficient way of harvesting these resources. And uh, you have here a picture also where, where this, these different types of inputs are mixed uh, for, for coal generation or for heat production. You have uh, the case of Brazil, also very successful in the biofuel, the only large-scale experiment in, in um, biofuels for transport, uh, and uh, very modern industry today, also upscaling uh, internationally. And we have the bioenergy rea reality of many developing countries that is more like that uh, in many parts of the world. In just the, about 10% uh, of the energy used in, uh, in, in the world is bioenergy, but most of it is used in this way. Uh, so this, these, these three uh, uh, slides show that we have a, a, a context of very different, uh, we have very different contexts. And so when we discuss emissions reductions, we need to keep that in mind. So that the, the reductions will be, uh, have, have to be planned differently uh, to give room for both development and also uh, in, in the long run build the, the solutions. So the questions that we can ask when assemble models for uh, to couple human and natural systems in the case of bioenergy, just to exemplify, I'll just move very fast here. For example, what is the temp temporal horizon that is appropriate for the model? And uh, you can discuss about uh, potential that we, we do kind of, uh, kind of an estimate in terms of bioenergy potential 50 years ahead. And uh, this is also made with, with uh, modeling. 
And uh, here is uh, just to illustrate that you have a variety of, of uh, possible inputs for biomass inputs. It can be agricultural uh, inputs or it can be forest inputs and uh, some of these, these, these measures which are, in, uh, which are marked here. Some are short term, some are long term based on, for example, genetic development and so forth. So what is the, the scale? Uh, or what is the spatial extent that is appropriate for dealing with the systems? That's quite complicated. For example, when we're discussing our land use change in other parts of the world because of certain types of, of measures that we are taking in another continent. And we have, again, a very different uh, um, spectrum of biomass potential uh, around the world in different types of, of, of uh, climatic zones. Just to illustrate this is, for example, the, if, if you have a sugar belt, which is in the, in the, in the middle part of the globe, the, the, the sugar beet belt, to which we belong in Europe, is actually pretty much in, in the temperate zones. And uh, here, uh, just to exemplify, in the U.S., for example, also at another spatial uh, separation that you can think this is a, is a map uh, looking at, uh, at, uh, at uh, the bio biomass potential. And what is the decision-making unit that should be selected? This is also complicated. On one hand, we have the global negotiations, for example, now taking place in Cancun, trying to get a, a global agreement around, uh, uh, around goals for climate change mitigation and, and adaptation. And on the other hand, we have many of the decisions are made at national level, some of the decisions are made at local level, and many decisions are actually made at, in, in the realm of companies. So how do you actually aggregate that and make sure that the sum of these parts actually are more than just the sum of the parts? What is the nature of the linkage between the human and the natural system and what information should pass between these systems and what, at what time interval? should the links occur. So you, if you talk about bioenergy as being a, a sustainable so, uh, uh, alternative, a sustainable option, and uh, how, how, how long can we wait for this cycle to be completed, actually? And here, a study that was made in Brazil to evaluate where we can expand the, the production of sugarcane and yet keep the, the, the sustainability criteria. And what is the role of stochastic events when, when, or in the critical thresholds in the evolution of the systems? And uh, here we are facing here the problem of increased stochastic events uh, in our environment. Is there enough information to adequately model a dynamic human system, a dynamic natural system, and their linkages in a way that captures essential elements of reality? And uh, yeah, you work uh, at different ends. This is, I chose to then exemplify this question with a very concrete issue related to development. The graph to the left is the, 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 the graph of one study we have where we have seen the human development index in the Amazon region increase very significantly as a result of uh, energy access. And yet we have two million people still without access in isolated groups and uh, we need to see what types of technological and actually uh, support systems we need to create to make sure that these two million people in the Brazilian Amazon actually can have access. These two million, it may sound like a small group, two million in 200 million people, but uh, these people are actually agent, very important agents for guaranteeing the sustainability of the region. And uh, finally, of course, uh, we have a situation where the urbanization to just to link to the study that I, I mentioned before, uh, may slow down the development in other parts of the world. These are mega trends that we know about and that can have a very strong impact on the development of energy systems. So systems analysis tools are a must in a complex world when we address uh, these energy challenges and when we plan for efficient, reliable, and carbon-free systems in a context of very stringent environmental and economic constraints, for example, the types of investments that we need to attract to energy uh, are calculated around $14 trillion uh, for the next uh, 20 years. And uh, then we need these tools when we actually evaluate the various options. And uh, through the interdisciplinary research, KTH can actually be a very important player in shaping the sustainable energy systems. 
that uh, we want to see in place in two decades. Thank you very much.